Hello everyone. Welcome to part 2 of Muet report writing lesson. In the first part, you have been introduced to the format of report writing. Let's recap. First, when writing a report, you need to have a title, introduction, overview, analysis, synthesis, and finally, the conclusion. I will now explain about analysis and synthesis. Analysis and synthesis are two important elements in report writing. These two elements should be written in simple past tense. What is analysis? Basically, Analysis is an explanation of a trend based on the visual given. It's a trend within the same visual. Analysis can be obtained either from visual 1 or visual 2. However, an effective analysis is the one that explains the first visual you see. How to write an analysis? First, you need to study the information in the visuals given. There is an element called key feature. Key feature indicates prominent information or the main subject reference stated in the visuals. Let's look at the visuals. The first visual is figure one. The x-axis indicates years, while the y-axis states the number of investors. What is the prominent information indicated in this visual? By studying the title, we can conclude that the visual is about the number of investors and types of investments. Not only that, the visual also describes the time frame from 1970 to 2010. Specifically, the time frame indicated in Figure 1 starts from 1970, followed by 1980, 1990, and finally, 2010. How many segments of time frame are mentioned? There are five different time frames. Let's look at the second visual, which is table one. The key feature is reasons for investing, and the other information is the time frame. Now, look at the key features in Figure 1. The first key feature is the number of investors. This is not to be confused with something else. For example, the number of people, the number of residents, or anything which is not even mentioned in the visual. The number is represented by, of course, a number. Look at the number in the graph. Let's look at the trend in 1970. We can see three different figures. The figures are also known as data. 40,000, 60,000 and 800,000. What do these numbers represent? These numbers represent the number of investors. Not only that, do you see three different colors for each line in the graph? The purple line, the orange line, and the blue one. What are those? By referring to the legend indicated in figure one, the purple line represents bank deposits, the orange line represents shares, whereas the blue one represents properties. These three types of investments are the other key features. Look again at the title of the visual. The number of investors, which is represented by the figures, and types of investments, which are represented by bank deposit, shares, and properties. Now, how many sets of key features do you see? Yes, you are correct. There are two sets of different key features, namely the number of investors 
and types of investments. Another important element is which time frame these two key features represent. Okay, let's look at 1970. There are 40,000 investors in properties. Remember, 40,000 represent the number of investors and properties indicates the type of investment. Now, you have this information. In 1970, there were 40,000 investors in properties. Is this an analysis? No, this is not an analysis yet. It is only a mere description of what happened in 1970 based on the information from the visual. Remember, analysis is an explanation of a movement of a trend. You have to compare and contrast two sets of key features within the same visual. You haven't seen any movement yet, have you? Using the same information, let's look at 1980. What happened to the number of investors in properties? Any changes? Yes, there is an increase in the number of investors in properties, right? Earlier, in 1970, the number of investors in properties was 40,000. But in 1980, the number grows to 120,000. How do you explain the trend movement in 1970 and 1980? You can explain it by saying, the number of investors in properties increased from 40,000 in 1970 to 120,000 in 1980. The word in bold is a trend word. Trend word is a word that explains movements or changes in the key features from one time frame to another. Then, you have your first analysis for properties. Let's look at the complete analysis again. The number of investors, this is key feature one. In properties, this is key feature two. Increased, this is the trend word, from 40,000, this is data. In 1970, this is the time frame, to 120,000, this is another data in 1980. This is another time frame. So, analysis is the combination of time frame plus key features plus trend word plus data. When writing an analysis, make sure you have all the elements needed for a complete set of analysis. Now that we know what happened to the number of investors in properties in 1970 and 1980, can you come up with your own analysis for the following year? Try writing an analysis on your own using the same key feature, which is properties. In 1990, the number of investors in properties was 380,000. Using the information from 1980, what can you deduce from this information? What happened to the number of investors in 1990? Did the number increase or decrease? Yes, in 1990, the number of investors in properties further increased to 380,000 from 120,000 in 1980. We can see the upward trend in the number of investors in properties from 40,000 in 1970 to 120,000 in 1980. The number further increased to 380,000 in 1990. However, the trend obviously changed in the year 2000 and 2010. We don't see any movement in the number of investors in 1990, 2000 and 2010, do we? So, 
How do you write your analysis then? Well, you can still explain the trend by saying the number of investors in properties remain constant at 380,000 in 1990, 2000 and 2010. So, which is the trend word in this analysis? Yes, you are right. The trend words are remained constant as the data did not record any movement for those three particular years. Now, you can write your own analysis using different key features such as bank deposit and shares. Another important aspect to remember is be careful when presenting the subject reference. Let me ask you a question. Is the following sentence considered as an accurate analysis? The properties increased from 40,000 in 1970 to 120,000 in 1980. Is this an accurate analysis? Obviously not. Why? Because the subject reference should be the number of investors and clearly it is missing entirely. Therefore, it changes the information totally. We are not talking about the amount of properties, but we are talking about the number of investors in properties. Please be careful when interpreting the information from the visuals. The analysis must refer correctly to the key feature or subject reference. Can we analyse the information in Table 1? What do you think? Remember, analysis is an explanation of a trend or movement in a visual. Therefore, we can also analyse information in Table 1. What is stated in Table 1? The key feature is reasons for investing and the other information is the time frame. Using the same formula for analysis, can you explain the movement of the trend in this visual? Can you make any comparison between the reasons for investing in 1970 and 2010? What are you comparing? You are comparing the number of reasons in 1970 and 2010. How many reasons are there in 1970 and in 2010? There are three reasons in 1970 and four reasons in 2010, right? What is the formula for analysis again? Time frame plus key feature plus trend word plus data. Look at the following sets of analysis. Look at the first analysis. In 2010, there were more reasons for investing in bracket 4 compared to 1970 in bracket 3. Second analysis, the number of reasons for investing in 1970 in bracket 3 was lesser than in 2010 in bracket 4. Based on the first analysis, the time frames are 1970 and 2010. The key feature is reasons for investing. The trend word is more and data 4 and 3 for 2010 and 1970 respectively. For the second analysis, the number of reasons for investing, the key feature in 1970, the time frame, 3 is the data, was lesser than the trend word here is lesser. Then in 2010, this is another time frame and 4 is data for 2010. Now, let's look at the other component in report writing, which is synthesis. First of all, you have to understand the difference between analysis and synthesis. As mentioned earlier, Analysis is an explanation of the trend of key features within the same visual. However, a synthesis 
is an explanation of trend in two different visuals. This is done by linking visual 1 and visual 2, or in this case, the link between figure 1 and table 1. Based on figure 1, there are two key features that we have discussed, haven't we? Do you see remember what the key features are? Yes, you are right. The key features are the number of investors and types of investments. When writing a synthesis, you also have to study the second visual. The second visual is Table 1. There is one piece of information in Table 1 which is reasons for investing. This is the key feature for Table 1. How many reasons are stated here? There are five reasons stated, namely to keep the family together, to start a business, to get married, to create wealth and to prepare for retirement. Please bear in mind that there is one more important piece of information that will affect the accuracy of your synthesis, which is the time frame for Table 1. Can you see the different time frames in Figure 1 and Table 1? The time frame for Figure 1 states five different blocks of time, which are 1970, 1980, 1990, 2000 and 2010. In contrast, there are only two time frames mentioned in Table 1, namely 1970 and 2010. Okay, please bear this in mind. For synthesis, the keyword is to link Figure 1 and Table 1. Therefore, when you write the synthesis, which is the correct time frame should you use? Can you use any time frame stated in Figure 1 or only the one stated in Table 1? Yes, you can only use the time frames stated in Table 1, which are 1970 and 2010 only. Why? This is because the keyword for synthesis is to link both visuals. Therefore, logically speaking, the link can only be made for the year 1970 and 2010 and these two years are only mentioned in Table 1. Okay, let's try writing your first synthesis. The number of investors in shares rose significantly from 80,000 in 1970 to 750,000 in 2010, as there were more reasons for investing in 2010 in bracket 4 compared to 1970 in bracket 3. Let's study this sentence one by one. From the phrase, the number of investors right until to 750,000 in 2010, this is an analysis whereby this information is obtained from Figure 1. After the phrase in 2010, then it is followed by the word as. The word as is a linker to link Figure 1 to Table 1. Let's read on. As there were more reasons for investing in 2010 in bracket 4, more is a trend word to show comparison in terms of number of reasons and 4 is the number of reasons for 2010. This is also the data. Whereas 3 is the number of reasons for the year 1970. Therefore, there is an increase in the number of reasons from 3 to 4 in 1970 and 2010 respectively. Based on this sentence, can you see the combination of information from Figure 1 and Table 1? And what is the word used to link both visuals? Yes, the word is S. Based on the example of the synthesis given, 
we can deduce that synthesis is the combination of analysis from figure 1 plus linker plus analysis from table 1. Okay, now let's try writing another synthesis for a different key feature. What happened to the number of investors in bank deposit in 1970 and 2010? What type of movement that you see? Did the number of investors in bank deposit increase or decrease? Yes, the number of investors in bank deposits decreased. Can we use the same linker, which is S, to write the synthesis? Is it logical? Okay, now let's try. As more reasons cited for investing in 2010, in bracket 4, compared to 1970, in bracket 3, the number of investors in bank deposits decreased from 600,000 in 1970 to 580,000 in 2010. Wait a minute. Does this make sense? It doesn't, does it? Okay, let's refine the sentence. We may have to change the linker to a more appropriate one in order to make the synthesis logical. Now, let's try this. Despite having more reasons for investing in 2010, in bracket 4, compared to 1970, in bracket 3, the number of investors in bank deposits decreased from 600,000 in 1970 to 580,000 in 2010. There you have it. The statement is logical, isn't it? So, please choose the correct linker in the synthesis because you won't be awarded with any marks if you provide an illogical linker as this will result in inaccurate information. As a result, no synthesis at all. For the linkers for synthesis, you may use other linkers such as although, thus, therefore, or most probably due to, whichever appropriate and logical.
Now we have come to the end of the lesson. I hope you will be able to write a complete piece of report writing with accurate analysis and synthesis. All the best to all of you. Bye.